In this video, we're going to be talking about Borders method. The way a board account works is first, voters rank the entire list of candidates in order of preference from most preferred to least preferred. Next, the votes are tallied as follows. The highest rank is given one point, the second highest is given two points, the third highest is given three points, and so on. The number of points each choice has is summed across all ballots, and the choice with the lowest number of points wins. This is the only voting method we're going to look at where the Whoever has the lowest score is the candidate that ends up winning. Just a warning, the book teaches this method a little bit differently from how I teach it, and if you're doing it using the book's way, you're free to do that on exams and homework assignments, uh, but the book's way, the highest score will end up being the winner, but I feel that the book's way is a little bit more complex. And the way that I'm going to show you, generally students have found this way to be easier, so that's why I'm teaching it this way. The general idea for what you're going to do to calculate a board account is for each candidate, multiply the number of each group's voters by their preference ranking, and then add all of them together. We'll take a look at an example now where we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. A group of 11 people are voting on what type of food to get, which will win if they use board as method. So the general idea here is to take our number of voters and to multiply it by their preference ranking. So we'll start with our first candidate tie. So we have one voter times a preference ranking of one. So that's number of voters times preference ranking. Now we're gonna add this to the next group of voters. We have three voters here that rank them second. So multiply that by three voters ranking them second. So again, this is our number of voters. And the two here is our preference ranking. Plus now we have five voters that all rank them first. So that's five voters times a preference ranking of one. We can think of this as five voters rank them first. So they're all giving this candidate one point. If we go over here, we have three voters that rank them second. So all three voters are giving them two points, which is going to make for six points total. Now we have two voters that rank them third. So those two voters are each going to give this candidate three points. So that would be two times three. Then we would multiply all of this out. We end up with 1 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6, and that ends up adding up to 18. Now we'll do this for the next two candidates. So here we have one voter that ranked them second. So that's one voter giving them two points, plus three voters that rank them third. So that's three voters times preference rank of three. Now we have five voters that rank them second, so that will be five times two, plus two voters that rank them second, so that will be two times two. And this comes out to two plus nine plus ten plus four, and that all adds up to 25. Now for our last candidate, we have one voter that rank them third, plus three voters that rank them first, plus five times three, so we had five voters that rank them third, plus two voters that rank them first. We multiply all this out, we end up with three plus three plus 15 plus two, and we end up with 23 here. So the lowest score that we have is 18, so this is the choice that would win using a board account or using board as method. Now let's look at another example. Here a survey was taken to rank the best antagonist, and we're told we have a certain number of percentage of voters instead of a specific number of voters. They're asking us who would win if we use Borda's method, then if we use plurality, then if we use plurality followed by a runoff between the top two candidates. So you will see questions like this on exams and on homework problems where they are going to give you one preference ranking table for voters, and they're going to ask you to determine who the winner would be if we used all sorts of different methods that we've looked at. So first we'll do part A, which was using Borda's method. So this is exactly the same way that we did this in the last example. We're going to take our number or percentage of voters and multiply it by their preference rankings. So here we have 23, which is our, you know, this would be our number of voters here, times a preference ranking of 1 plus 3 times 1, plus 10 times 2, plus 20 times 3, plus 7 times 2, 
plus 27 times 3. And if we simplify all of this, it ends up adding up to 201. Now we'll do the next candidate. So we have 23 times a preference ranking of 2, plus 3 times a preference ranking of 3, plus 10 times a preference ranking of 1, plus 20 times a preference ranking of 1, plus 7 times a preference ranking of 3, plus 27 times a preference ranking of 2, and all of these, once we do the work, end up adding up to 180. Now for our last candidate, we have 23 times a preference ranking of 3, plus 3 times a preference ranking of 2, plus 10 times a preference ranking of 3, plus 20 times a preference ranking of 2, plus 7 times a preference ranking of 1, plus 27 times a preference ranking of 1. We do the work for this and it ends up adding up to 209. So the lowest board account that we have here is 180, so this is who will win the election if we use board as method. And we'll go back to this part. B is asking us who would win if we use plurality, and then C is asking who would win if we use plurality followed by a runoff between the top two candidates. So for part B, we use plurality. So you should probably take a few minutes to try and solve this with plurality and a runoff on your own because we've done this before. Pause the video now, try and do it yourself, and then when you think you're finished, hit play and you can see the rest of the solution. So just going for regular plurality here. First we see we want to go for all of our first place votes. Okay, so Zuko has 23 plus 3 votes. Katra has 10 plus 20 votes. And Team Rocket has 7 plus 27 votes. So they end up getting tallies of 36, 30, and 34. So Zuko wins by plurality. Then part C is asking us to do a runoff between the top two choices. So our top two finishers in plurality are Zuko and Team Rocket, so we're going to eliminate Katra. So these 23 voters and these three voters are still going to vote for Zuko because their first choice is still in the election. Now we have these 10 voters and these 20 voters have to change who they're going to vote for. They're both going to vote for their second choices because those are the highest choices that are still left in the election, but they have different second choices. So these 10 voters are going to give their votes to Zuko, and these 20 voters are going to give their votes to Team Rocket. And then these 7 and 27, their first choice is still there, so that's who they vote for. And these scores end up adding up to 46 and 54. So Team Rocket ends up winning the runoff. And again, if we wanted to check our work, the entire number of voters up here, or percent in this case, adds up to 100. If we add all of these up, they add up to 100, which works. So that's a method for checking for plurality and for runoff. Unfortunately, we can't check Borda's method like that, but for these parts, you can still check. Let's look at another example. Given the following voter preference rankings, which candidate would win if a board account was used to decide? So we'll start solving this now. So for our first candidate, we have 5 voters times a preference ranking of 1, plus 3 voters times a preference ranking of 4, plus 2 voters times a preference ranking of 4. And that adds up to 25. For our next candidate, we have 5 voters times a preference ranking of 2, plus 3 voters times a preference ranking of 3, plus 2 voters times a preference ranking of 1. And that adds up to 21. For our next candidate, we have 5 voters times a preference ranking of 3, plus 3 voters times a preference ranking of 2, plus 2 voters times a preference ranking of 2. And all of that adds up to 25. And then for our last candidate, we have 5 voters times a preference ranking of 4, plus 3 voters times a preference ranking of 1 plus two voters times a preference ranking of three. And that adds up to 29.
So if we look at all of the board accounts we have now, the lowest one we have is 21. So Bulbasaur wins using board as method. Let's look at one more example now. Given the following voter preference rankings, determine which candidate would win if the election is decided using board as method. What I'd suggest doing now is pause the video, try to solve this yourself, then hit play when you either get stuck or when you're finished, and you can see me go through the rest of the solution. Okay, so here's the rest of the solution. We just multiply the number of voters by their preference ranking. We do this for each group of voters and for each preference ranking they have, we add across and we end up seeing that Kiwi and Lychee both have the lowest counts and they're tied. So we can also have ties with Borda's method too, it's still something that can happen. And that's it, you don't need to do anything else, you don't need to do any type of a Borda's method runoff or anything like that, your final answer would just be there's a tie between these two choices.